U.S. federal investigators are still following leads in the Boston Marathon bombings that left three dead and hundreds injured back in April. The suspects, two ethnically Chechen brothers, Tamerlan and Johar Sarnayev. Since the attack, authorities have questioned other Chechens in the United States who may have had ties to the Sarnayevs. VA Russian service reporter and North Caucasus expert Fatima Tlisova talked with one former Chechen rebel who says he met with Tom Erlan just a month before the attack. She talked with me about her exclusive interview and other insights into the lives of the Tsarnaevs. Let's roll it. Looking at Tamerlan Sarnayev, who is seen by authorities to have been the mastermind behind these Boston Marathon bombings, does it look to you like someone who was self-radicalized or who was influenced by other possibly rebel elements? I've studied the, uh, the history of his family and I've spoken to almost all the people who knew him in, in Boston, all the Chechens, and the impression I've got of, on him was that probably Ruslan Sarni, his uncle, gave the most uh, accurate description. The only, I say, what I think what's behind it being losers, not being able to settle themselves, and thereby just hating everyone who did. Tamerlan Tsarnaev uh, was a loser, in, in my opinion, after all these uh, interviews. His um, American dream was to, uh, to become a member of the Olympic team uh, for arts. boxing. Tamerlan Tsarnaev. He had a criminal record and that's why he was expelled from the team and he lost his privilege to become an American citizen. So that was his biggest failure and after that he was uh, trying to prove himself in different ways. In my understanding and uh, judging from my um, you know, experience in dealing with uh, this kind of individuals back in, in the Caucasus. There was some basics um, for uh, Tamerlan to become radicalized. But uh, um, to take this kind of step, he needed to be influenced by somebody. We don't know who, uh, who that person or those persons were. If there is indeed a link between the two bombers and militant groups based in the North Caucasus, this would indeed be the first time that we've seen uh, jihadist groups based in, in that region exporting uh, acts of terrorism to the American soil. Uh, that said, at present, there seems to be few indications that these two do indeed have links to an established uh, jihadist organization. And what about uh, the cultural influence? You've talked about this existence of an alpha male ideal within uh, the Chechen community inside the Caucasus region. Can you, can you talk about that? That's actually a multi-level uh, issue because uh, when you look at the whole story of Vladimir Putin coming to power uh, to um, Kremlin, it's all about history of power, of martial arts, of alpha male culture. This uh, culture of alpha male was actually taken to the uh, extreme level by Putin's um, representative in Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov. And Ramzan Kadyrov's lifestyle is mostly about power, about martial arts, about proving himself as the most powerful uh, person in Chechnya and maybe elsewhere in the Caucasus. And uh, if we look back to the time of insurgency, we see some uh, romantic ideas of independence and uh, freedom of Chechnya. Now we see Chechnya more Islamic and more radicalized than ever before. And at some point, actually, Ramzan Kadyrov tried to declare himself as imam of Chechnya, not the president, not a, a secular um, governor of this uh, Russian province, but as an imam of Chechnya. And in minds of many, many Chechens, Chechnya is the land of Sharia. So it's not no longer the land of Jihad. They have to go somewhere else. And this culture of uh, alpha male lifestyle is actually influencing many, many uh, younger generations of uh, younger generation Chechens, including those living in the United States or, or in Europe, because 
you know, they travel frequently back and forth to Chechnya and to the countries of their asylum. And they pick up all this style, they look up at this style and they want it to be like them, they, they want to mirror this style. Uh, you know, in their own understanding. And you did see that with Tom Erlon. Yes, absolutely. He was trying to live a life of a man of success, although he was on the public assistance. Anyway, he was trying to live up to the point where back from Chechnya, people would see him as a, vo a very successful, a rich alpha male. VOA Russian service reporter Fatima Tlisova. Our thanks again to her for her insights into this still developing story.